Uh, I would like to begin with uh, 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 such gratitude for uh, <clears throat> appreciation having me tonight uh, for this uh, uh, teaching and uh, I'm very happy that uh, once again, uh, whether my teaching is uh, <clears throat> uh, impact on you or not, you are still alive <laughs> during this pandemic. And uh, that is uh, very, a special uh, news and special uh, <clears throat> gift and special blessing. And also I know that uh, there are so many things happening during this uh, uh, very unusual 21st century 2020 uh, and uh, 
good fire <clears throat> in California, uh, all this hurricane and the pandemic. So it's uh, basically capturing the actual definition of, uh, of samsara. Um, uh, and uh, so middle of all of this, middle of all these uh, <clears throat> natural disasters or pandemic, once again, you know, we have to uh, admit, we have to accept, we have to refresh that uh, it's amazing that we are still uh, able to see each other <laughs> uh, without needing uh, social distance or masks on on the screen so it's very special so please uh, the remaining time uh, whether it will be one and a half an hour i don't know how long i will last but uh, <laughs> my teaching sometimes uh, you know, it doesn't last that long because, you know, it's not much to, sometimes my teaching doesn't come out uh, because uh, due to the lacking of uh, experience. <clears throat> but uh, please do generate bodhicitta thinking that this uh, few minutes uh, spending time with the bodhicitta and uh, uh, doing this for the benefit of all sentient beings especially news doesn't capture everything but uh, i can imagine that so many so many animals you know, or insects uh, burned or died through this uh, uh, fire and uh, they all deserve our prayer and our bodhicitta. So tonight topic is uh, for beginners uh, how to you know, practice uh, for the beginners. <clears throat> and uh, Generally speaking, that uh, when Buddha uh, gave a teaching mm. known as uh, Dharma, mm. Dharma means uh, uh, not to harm oneself, not to harm others. And uh, Dharma is like we call ambrosia like medicine to heal the suffering of uh, ourselves and others. And that is a fundamental definition of Dharma, not to harm oneself, not to harm others. Uh, and uh, so when Buddha gave uh, teaching or Dharma uh, and uh, <clears throat> The disciples heard differently. Some disciples heard uh, direct meaning of Dharma. Some disciples uh, heard like indirect uh, meaning of Dharma. Uh, some disciples never heard any or captured any the depth of uh, dharma so that's why there's a beginner there's a intermediate and there's a, you know <clears throat> uh, advanced practitioner uh, and also the beginner uh, basically focusing on the the first uh, <clears throat> focus for beginners uh, is uh, understanding about uh, Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha. When beginners begin to 
learning about uh, Buddha's teaching, the first uh, step, uh, it seems like uh, to take refuge, you know, Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. And uh, so the Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, all has to have same definition as I expressed earlier, as uh, not to harm oneself, not to harm others. Even though this is the definition of uh, teaching, but uh, Buddha uh, defines also the same meaning because when you talk about Buddha, we view Buddha as a protector protector, protect from what to protect. <clears throat> and from where, how to protect or, so when we talk about protector means protect from uh, suffering, suffering oneself and suffering, uh, of other sentient beings. So that's why Buddha in Tibetan we call Sangye. Sang means uh, someone like ourselves who had all these uh, uh, negative emotions, mm -hmm. harm ourselves all the time and harm others all the time. Nevertheless, Buddha at the beginning, he went through same stage like we did, but uh, uh, then slowly he discovered that uh, there is a solution. There's a solution about uh, <clears throat> how we could free from suffering. So he himself began to learn about Dharma, which means not to harm oneself, not to harm others. So that means from refuge all the way to enlightenment, every concept that Buddha gave teaching, <clears throat> Buddha taught is all is aimed to liberate our suffering. If you think about Bodhicitta, it liberates suffering, not just like consequence, like in the future, but even like temporary, even directly in fact. For example, during this pandemic, the most profound practice is uh, not to harm oneself, not to harm others. That is uh, <clears throat> uh, patience. And uh, so Buddha means awakening and fully matured his uh, realization. It's all about not to harm oneself, not to harm others. And then uh, Dharma itself, uh, of course, not to harm oneself, not to harm others. And then there's Sangha. Sangha in Tibetan is uh, Gendun. <clears throat> My voice is very, a little bit funny today because I talked a lot. Sparkling water. Let's drink some sparkling water. <laughs> Excuse me. And then uh, gain dun means uh, gain means uh, virtuous actions. Uh, someone think positive. Mm -hmm. Think positive immediately infects not to harm oneself, not to harm others. What is the definition of positive thoughts? Well, the 10 virtuous actions for beginners. It's utmost important practice in Buddhism, 10 virtuous actions. People receive the 10 virtuous actions. <clears throat> People read and you feel, well, this is just a, very fundamental, but these 10 virtuous actions are so important. 
It's so related with our daily life. First, not to kill. Of course, we don't kill sentient beings physically or intentionally, <clears throat> but we involve the killing you know, indirectly, what to, what the choice we make, eating, uh, clothing, <clears throat> uh, decoration, making up, you know, all of this requires indirect killing. And uh, then not to steal, because we don't uh, steal, you know, go out and to steal things, but uh, uh, unfortunately we do steal a lot of things from sentient beings without uh, permission, like uh, what we do, like we say we have a, a house, we have a garden, et cetera, and we basically, you know, destroy a lot of, uh, well, I have a garden, <laughs> I have all of this. And so when you begin to shape your life, you kill or you steal things from others, or non-human beings or sentient beings or insects, etc. So there's a little bit indirectly involved, but not the definition that Buddha teach, you know, steal means you really actually steal. You know, and uh, not of sexual misconduct, I think that's uh, pretty clear. And then that is the, you know, virtues of your body. And then, uh, uh, four virtuous, virtuous actions of your speech. That is one we really violate, violently. Oh my God. First, um, uh, lying, you know, we, we lie, not to lie. So a lot of people, I think, uh, don't intentionally lie. Uh, maybe <clears throat> lies, uh, you know, maybe you captured. But then uh, uh, harsh words, telling harsh words, that is uh, very dangerous. And uh, especially families, you know, especially during the pandemic. <laughs> You've seen your loved ones whole day, whole week, whole months. And if someone able to <clears throat> prevent from saying harsh words, I think one of the best accomplishments you can ever have during this time. So harsh word doesn't mean someone just uh, uh, yelling. But harsh word means, uh, you know, you're mentally frustrated, and then you know how to twi twist your words uh, in order to harm your, you know, your mentally agitated. And harsh uh, word happens <clears throat> a lot. Then uh, there's slander word, which means you see that two people are very friendly, and then you you are also friends with another person. You, out of your jealous, you say some things that you know make the other person upset. You know that happens, especially I think pandemic brings us the worst or the best. Pandemic, this kind of condition <clears throat> brings either worst or either best. If it brings the worst of us, it's okay. It's okay. We just. Uh, forgive, you know, it uh, takes time, but uh, not to ignore, not to ignore. Yesterday I got upset, yesterday I did a lot of bad things, you know, or maybe politically or whatever situation. Today you are no longer that person, you know, you are changed, I am changed. Today is a new day, today is a new person. Every minute changes. You have great opportunity. I was watching 
or joining the teaching um, given by Munjur Rinpoche. <clears throat> and he has mentioned that, you know, this is a great opportunity to practice. This is a years of years of practicing Dharma counts on this, uh, you know, pandemic or this kind of a very <clears throat> suffering life. So patience, if someone has a patience, and it uh, most beautiful thing you can have in your life, not to harm yourself and not to harm others. Patience doesn't mean that you have to, you know, just not say words, but mentally become quiet. Patience means almost like nothing happened. If somebody says something, you have a patience to be quiet mentally. Then in Nacho, the last one is the idle speech or gossip. Oh my God, that is so happening these days on Facebook or everywhere. And uh, if there's a, a little <clears throat> something going on, makes a really big deal. So we just talk a lot and those talking is because of frustration. You know, those old talk we have may not be always positive. So these are extremely important for beginners uh, and uh, something to analyze for all of us that whether we practice in the 10 virtuous actions. And the next is three, three parts of your you know, mental uh, aspect, which is uh, Now send me send Lobratawa. Now send means uh, your mind is uh, constantly wanting something. You are not satisfied. <clears throat> and uh, but what you want or what you really constantly searching for can be very harmful because you might constantly searching or supporting your addiction, especially when you are, when we are no longer focused on practice, we are searching or we are constantly following something that we addicted. It can be YouTube, <laughs> it can be Facebook, it can be, you know, gossip, it can be um, <clears throat> substance, uh, substance abuse, like drink a lot, mm, drugs, etc. But uh, as a practitioner, this is a beautiful time to <clears throat> overcome those, uh, you know, bad habits and uh, finding actual satisfaction. Mm. For example, like uh, if you all of a sudden get upset or some kind of, you know, negative emotion experience. <clears throat> For the beginners, it is mentioned that uh, just uh, treat that particular emotion as fire. That means uh, all of a sudden there's a sparker, sparkling or piece of fire kind of falls on your lap and you will not treasure that. You will jump. <laughs> I mean, who wants to touch the fire? 
because there's consequences fire burns and suffering. Likewise, you know, if you have a anger, all of a sudden you get angry. And then you want to just to let it go, <clears throat> just to drop it. The reason why is that you experience suffering immediately and also uh, such severe consequences. Anger basically blind, blinds your wisdom. You can't see nothing. It's just a wall dropped. <clears throat> wall blocked your wisdom and you, you will make a lot of mistakes. We will make a lot of mistakes. So any negative emotion arise as a beginner consider as a like fire or snake fall on your lap. <laughs> I sometimes watch uh, this the series of YouTube. You know, you can see I'm addicted with YouTube, right? So this we call just for a laugh. You know, there's a whole series of that. And uh, so sometimes people just, uh, you know, throw a snake look like and how People, you know, people it don't say, oh, I feel so good. They don't care. They just jump, you know, just totally wild. <clears throat> and uh, everything takes training. And uh, as long as we are determined to not to experience sufferings, these are the things that we have to train with our mind. We can't just be so impatient, you know, practicing a few days and expecting there's a special result. Actually, if you practice few days wholeheartedly, I guarantee that there will be a tremendous result. For example, like, uh, oh, today, this is, you probably heard a lot from me because I have those problems, right? When somebody repeats again and again, that means that person has a problem. So today I will not get upset. Just one day. I mean, just one day. <clears throat> and uh, at the beginning of your day, and before you finish your commitment, you know, one of your family knocking your door, and you might get upset right away. Come on, I'm just making this commitment. <laughs> But that's how you practice. Practice makes perfect. And then slowly you feel a lightness experience. Oh, actually, even you can't do it. There's a fin of a lift, something lift, you know, because what you are committed is a positive mind. Right? Tonight after this teaching, you say, oh, I will not get upset until I fall to sleep, you know. <clears throat> if you are very tired, that doesn't take much time. You know, after this, maybe you know, you're already sleeping from my teaching now. <laughs> but you know, it's practice. Practice really makes uh, better and better. <clears throat> and uh, um, so that is. Uh, you know, for example, like for beginners, you know, we are not talking about you know, meditating, we are not talking about you know, self-liberation, we are not talking about, we are simply talking about, you know, uh, a poison, a piece of poison, a uh, 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 mushroom falling in your mouth. You don't just uh, open your mouth, you just uh, simply, you know, so scared <clears throat> because you know this poison. So when negative, feelings comes up, you know, it's a poison for beginners. You, they, they don't have a, when I talk about beginners, they don't have the method to uh, self-liberate. <clears throat> but instead, um, the moment you kind of, uh, oh, there comes the anger and you don't want to get angry. And uh, it may not go out right away, but you already, um, reducing it. Mm -hmm. 
stand on Chamon to the mind. Love that. <clears throat> then the Nissan and the second uh, among the three uh, mental aspects is uh, harmful thoughts. Uh, Nissan means uh, you want to harm somebody, you know, or not intentionally want to harm, but because of the addiction, addiction, not always like, you know, I'm addicted with the uh, cake or sweet or such, you can addict with horrible feelings, negative thoughts or sadness such. <clears throat> so because, for example, like when you stay with your loved ones whole day during pandemic or <clears throat> then your all emotions comes up. Nobody wants to harm intentionally, but because of your addiction, you're addicted with that feeling, that sound, that rhythm, that normal, normality. So you accidentally uh, experience those and then uh, you have, you know, kind of a feeling of anger or harmful thoughts arise. Uh, <clears throat> but this kind of uh, feelings of uh, you know, harmful thoughts to yourself, such as anger or whatever, you know, uh, experience is uh, for the beginners, you know, as I mentioned, like uh, you don't want to capture it. You will experience, but oh, this is not good. You have to recognize and you cannot just, uh, you know, <clears throat> the more you focus on or you, more you have evil friends, your path will go down very quickly. So it's kind of uh, those feelings are your evil friends. You have to recognize. Once you recognize it, you have to work on it. There's no such thing Dhamma will liberate us, uh, you know, without us involving practice. No matter what you, uh, no matter how, ma how many teachings you receive, it's all about uh, our mind training and our mind connect with your feeling. What, what, what do I mean about uh, connect our mind with the feeling is that when you get angry and uh, immediately, oh, no, no, I can't get angry, I'm a practitioner. And also it doesn't do any good, there is consequence. You, see, you have already <clears throat> feeling that, you know, the antidote. And then immediately you will experience some kind of lightness, some kind of a transformation. On the other hand, if you don't do that, once you experience anger, then you just think about all the conditions that could explore or strengthen your anger or any other emotions. And so then we basically, you know, uh, this uh, poor consciousness is jailed in this uh, very narrative, egoistic dualism. And uh, that's life we have to face throughout our life. <clears throat> we cannot point in our fingers to somebody, oh, he who said something, he, that's, that's samsara. You know, that's samsara. Don't expect, you know, or they will change, you know, because they didn't change this because it happened to me. That's a very uh, <clears throat> weak excuse. This has nothing to do with uh, others, you know, we have to work ourselves and uh, so that is harmful to this then wrong, wrong, mm, wrong way or <clears throat> wrong view. What does wrong view mean? Wrong view means that uh, even you hear Dharma, even you know that, uh, I mean, someone teaches about meditation would work for overcoming your negative thoughts, etc. And you are not believing 
uh, you are not trusting it. You know, you feel that you know this is just a mere projection of uh, <clears throat> false information. So those are, can be wrong view. So these ten virtuous actions extremely important, and uh, this is a <clears throat> part of our moral discipline. Uh, whether you are monastic or whether you are lay person. Male, female, doesn't matter. The mental state is no different. You know? <clears throat> so that, uh, that's how we kind of practice uh, the 10 virtuous actions. Uh, this is the first thing I want to talk about. The second is uh, for the beginners, the meditation. You know, meditation for beginners. Spared it? yellow jacket bees. <laughs> There's a bees here. The second meditation is uh, for the beginners. Of course, there's shamatha meditation, there's vipassana meditation, there are so many, you know, uh, aspects of meditation. And within shamatha meditation, there are so many aspects. But for the beginners, the meditation should be, uh, according to Kimbrambachi, for the beginners, the meditation should be four thoughts. Hi, Eric. Sorry, I read in nice. I will see you for a long time. So, and uh, the four thoughts is a very, very special concept. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> I think uh, our teacher, Kimber uh, is an example of someone uh, mastered with four thoughts. The first is a precious human birth. And second is impermanence, third is coming condition, and the last is defects or samsara. So we can talk a lot about these four thoughts, but what in brief, what is the definition of uh, precious human birth means this, our body, that we have is extremely precious because those of us who have the opportunity to practice Dharma, that's why it is so precious. Not every sentient being has a, you know, this body. We are a little different because we understand you know, what to practice such. So this, uh, <clears throat> this body of precious in the birth is extremely important. And uh, the second is uh, impermanence. Everybody knows about impermanence, but the essence of impermanence is that uh, nothing stays. Difficult circumstances uh, pass while we are experiencing. <clears throat> Pandemic passes, even though there are a lot of damages, but it passes, nothing stays there. You experience anger, you experience jealousy, you experience you know, depression, everything passes. There's nothing you can hold on to it. The reason why we experience a lot of suffering is because we are hold on to something that is not real. So that's why, you know, but you have to think about, you know, everything changes, at times you are, miserable condition, but it's okay. It changes, you know, it passes, continue passes. <clears throat> but the one problem is that once you see them so real, nothing is, uh, you know, everything seems like permanent. That's how you create the next phase of the four thoughts that is the karma because we are hold on to this you know, thing so tightly, 
and we feel like every day is exactly the same, no difference, not knowing that life is passing by, like, you know, nothing, it's just a passing, passing, passing. So then later on, you will look back, oh, I should have done this, I should have done that, instead of just capturing the moment. This moment is the precious thing. <clears throat> Tonight is a precious thing. I still have this opportunity. You know, it passed, but I want to pass nicely. Tomorrow is a precious thing. I want it will pass no matter what you do. Nothing you can stop. But I want to pass this every moment nicely, virtually, patiently. Patience is very important. You know, I'm Le Lama, right? I'm Le person. I have family. <clears throat> So patience is a, <laughs> no, a big time. Uh, so much involved patience, patience. And uh, I'm still learning, but uh, how does patience impact on you as a lay person's life is that uh, you hear a lot of stuff, you involve a lot of activities, you have so many things to take care of. And as long as you involve the patient with impermanence, you know, this works together. <clears throat> if you see your loved ones upset or suffering or something, and uh, or you're upset to you, or you cause upset or something you think, uh, you know, not, uh, doesn't make sense, but you have to also remind that uh, this duration that I'm experiencing is passing right in front of us while I'm thinking. And your loved one's life's also passing by while you are thinking or even like, you know, going through difficulties. So everything changes. And uh, when you think about everything changed, you treasure <clears throat> The moment by moment. So impermanence is so much taught. We always teach about impermanence. Impermanence is so powerful, even like uh, advanced practitioners, so it doesn't matter. It has to do with uh, beginners, intermediate, uh, advanced practitioners. For example, like a meditator, right? Meditator. Oh my, you when know, you meditate and uh, looking at your mind and then some people meditate and are really upset <laughs> because you, you, you really expect, you know, everything just calm and then not working. And if someone think about impermanence during meditation, or somebody knows about med, you know, impermanence as a practitioner, your meditation would work well. Why? Because when you begin to meditate and you experience neurosis of your mind or growth of your mind, you, know, you have patience to look, you have patience to uh, you know, experience because you know nothing stays there. You know, what you are you experiencing it passes, you know, constantly pass. So impermanence is very special for <clears throat> uh, meditation. And then last uh, of uh, the four thoughts is uh, defects of samsara. This has a lot of definition, but the simple way of uh, <clears throat> describing defects of samsara is uh, confusion never leads us to enlightenment. That's all about uh, you know samsara. Samsara is nothing more than confusion. Confusion, nothing more than lacking of. Uh, uh, mindfulness or lacking of self liberation. So as long as we have confusion, confusion itself is not really bad, but confusion without 
noticing is the worst. Right? If you experience delusion, confusion, and uh, if you recognize that, if you recognize this confusion or delusion at the source of samsara, negative karma, your depression, etc., <clears throat> and then you will naturally you know, uh, remedy or naturally uh, uh, apply remedy or antidote. And that is uh, what I had mentioned earlier. Confusion has many uh, parts, but you know, the emotions are the ones the worst. Uh, severe or coarse negative emotions like anger, sadness. So just to test, you know, when, whenever you experience that, you know, consider as a fire, consider as a snake fall on your lap, just, just drop and freeze there. Oh, I, no, I, I don't want to continue. But because of your habitual patterns, it will continue, but it will not have same power. I guarantee that. Can I guarantee that? Did I say that? I did say that. Actually, I guarantee that because I suffered so much and still suffering and uh, I have no choice not to do something. So those are very, very, those are very, very helpful. <clears throat> I guess those are beginners advice. I, think, I don't know if it's advice or it's just a, <clears throat> so, I mentioned 10 virtuous actions, four thoughts, and I'm on the four thoughts is, uh, I didn't mention the karma much. So karma is, uh, generally it says in teachings, karma can discipline us if you take it seriously because karma can create based on our negative thoughts or anger as such and uh, create a lot of suffering and nobody uh, looking for suffering, nobody deserves suffering. Nobody, we, we are just so fragile. We are so impatient with suffering. We are so, we are <clears throat> so, um, doesn't have any patience with suffering. But meanwhile, because of ignorance, we constantly have all this corrosive you know, uh, emotions and uh, it's almost like, you know, uh, blind person, you know, start to walking through a uh, forest of thorns because he or she can't see it. That doesn't, that doesn't make sense. Maybe that's a good example. But karma is, uh, if someone understand the karma, they will not, they will do everything to to overcome, you know, if somebody understands that you have a poison or you have a fire on your body or something, you will do everything to overcome it. So karma is, uh, uh, you know, karmic conditions, uh, very important. So the essence of karmic condition, as it's mentioned in teachings, that uh, uh, how you kind of meditate on karmic condition is that uh, there's a quotation from Janga Kondra, I can't remember correctly. <clears throat> so basically what he said in, in his teaching in the Torch of True Many is that uh, if someone uh, understands about karma, karmic condition, and this individual consider following our practice lineage. So the karma is nothing more than, uh, as it says in Hindu practice, you know, uh, uh, Somebody should say wrong. It says that uh, 
at the time of death, at the time of death, uh, you have no choice not to experience everything what you have accumulated, negative karma. Therefore, someone understand the karmic condition, you always examine your mind and you will continue you know, experience or you know, practice the virtuous actions. <clears throat> I think that's it, you know. Uh, that's all those 10 virtuous actions, four thoughts uh, are very important for uh, beginners. And uh, this is uh, so much combined with our daily life. And uh, I do hope that uh, we can, you know, practice it and uh, we're able to benefit. And if you have any questions, please ask. Mama Karma? Yes, ma'am. I have a question. Um, maybe could you go further into how do you meditate on karmic condition? What thoughts do you put in your mind before you start meditating? How mm. do you create a contemplative meditation on karmic condition? According to Kimber Muche, you know, first we have to read about karmic condition, you know, karma actually once again involves with the 10 virtuous actions and 10 non-virtuous actions, right? <clears throat> and you read this and uh, then uh, there are different comic conditions. For example, like uh, uh, there are some uh, actions, uh, immediate consequences, uh, very serious consequences such as killing or, you know, uh, hurting others uh, very badly, mentally or, or racially or whatever way, you know, <clears throat> or just uh, you know, having burst of anger or you know, argue with your loved ones, you know, those are very quite powerful um, negative uh, uh, actions. And uh, so basically, you know, there's no escape from karmic condition if I perform these uh, 10 non virtuous actions. Therefore, I will examine my mind every second, every day, try not to perform any negative actions. But uh, <clears throat> actually, if someone understands karma, you become um, a little bit of panic oh no, it's like, oh no, I can't do it because you know, it creates a lot of suffering. So, for example, like uh, there's a Kadampa master uh, and uh, he expressed that he never loved it the entire his life. He was meditating on impermanence or karma because he said he has no time to do that. So, so I think, uh, According to Jung Kohn's uh, explanation, you you can you know first recognizing what is the negative karma, and then secondly you know you examine your, your body, speed, mind, and if you are performing those, if you create negative karma, you confess them. You can confess, and if you uh, doing positive karma, rejoice and dedicate. Uh, Lama Karma, what is Shamatha meditation? Shamatha means uh, calm, abiding. So calm, abiding meditation means uh, two things. One is uh, understanding your natural, your mind's natural is always calm. It has never affected by past, future, present, disturbing thoughts. All those 
disturbing thoughts are like a fog, you know, nothing, uh, it, it, it doesn't attach to the space. That's calm state is always there. And then abide means you naturally reside in there. But uh, as a practice, then you have to do the practice, you know, uh, for beginners, especially using breath, you know, breathing out, breathing, breathing out, breathing 21 times and uh, fully qualified to make you much calmer than the original. <laughs> your mind is agitated. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi. Um, Hi. I was wondering how to um, think about all the uh, uh, bone my bone adjustments that when I meditate, as I breathe through, I know that it's energy releasing and over time things get lighter, but sometimes, sometimes there's this uncertainty like maybe, um, and, and I think what's happening is this is a pattern of trying to force the change, it tries to come in, but I have to remember to just relax and just let only the change that's ready to occur instead of lean into it too much. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering if um, you had some more like deeper perspective um, to help me uh, just just be more clear and relating with it. That makes sense. Sorry, I don't think I understand the question clearly. Is is it something to do with physical posture? Yeah. yeah. So when I meditate, mm -hmm. I get. Uh, cranial adjustments my my mm -hmm. neck and my head and my shoulders mm -hmm. they snap they move mm -hmm. oh. and i i know it's part of the letting go but part of it is that um uh, it's distracting throws me mm -hmm. off every it can be very it can be very sharp and very sudden and very intense and very frequent <clears throat> and i don't know if there's a way to be with it that maybe can help uh, can help me be more less distracted when it happens mm -hmm. and more fluid with the with the shifting um there are many posture definitions but uh, if you are sitting on chair or if you are you know <clears throat> sit on cushion sometimes some postures if you can't do it no, uh, spine straight, spine straight, wherever, whether you are walking or whether you are sitting or whether you are even leaning on your bed, you know, still you, you maintain it spine straight, it's very important. And then other postures, uh, there are three, Definitions of uh, posture itself. One is uh, uh, gentleness. You have to be very gentle with your posture, and that brings, you know, lightness in your body, <clears throat> and then that brings some more, like uh, you know, um, shipping, and, uh, peaceful peacefulness and uh, so if you have uh, this kind of uh, physical you know changing kind of experience sometimes it can be kind of a mental activity then actual something happening uh, and so i would recommend any physical posture i mean unless uh, you know some people have different um, physical difficulties and otherwise these three are very important, you know, just be gentle, right? Whatever posture or even you sit straight, just be gentle. And then uh, you feel a sen sense of lightness. This gentleness actually has to do with your, any physical movement. For example, like if you washing dishes, be gentle with <clears throat> washing dishes. 
walk gently, talk gently, moving things gently, driving the car gently. <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, does that help? Yeah. I, I, um, I do think that some of the adjustments is a pattern of um, forcefulness trying to push. And so, um, but it's not um, in the forefront that it's happening. So I think um, focusing on, on the gentleness will help it unwind. And, and, you know, whatever happens, happens type of thing. Right, but uh, also please, uh, maybe someone can comment on that. Maybe I not understand you fully. Yes, Wendy, Beth. Yeah, Beth. I think the gentleness is a is a good reminder. Mm -hmm. helping. Thank you. Nice to see you. So let's get Beth here. I think she wanted to say something. Yes, please. Can you unmute Beth? Who's doing the who's leading it? Who can unmute Beth? I'm the one lady. <laughs> Um, everybody, uh, no, Beth, Beth has to unmute herself. I can't do it. You can? Okay. She has to unmute herself. I can hear you. Beth. Oh, there's one. You had it for a moment. Hold on a second. Beth, click on the little red uh, microphone with the line through it, and that'll bring up a blue box that says unmute. There you go. Okay. Okay, so probably having audio issues because you're unmuted, but we can't hear you. But I yeah. know what you're saying. Oh, there. And uh, too much practice, next thing comes a lot. So the gentleness is so important. If you're sitting there and you're feeling a burning and stabbing, sometimes it passes after a few minutes. But if it doesn't, take a break and just lean forward, take a few breaths, get a walk around a second and come back and sit down and see once again how the pain is. And work at it and be gentle because you're meditating on a time schedule. Every time you sit, it's just meditation. So, working with the pain and the is very important. And it's very important not to get angry at pain. That it gets it adds pain if you're angry that you're paying pain. That's all. Thank you. <laughs> I have a question, Mamala. Yes, please. Okay, so what happens when we're when uh, in meditation, you know, sometimes I bring in a little bit of like what's going on in the world politically and all the it's so intense and I try not to get too much into it, but sometimes it will seep in and I find myself getting all the, some anger will be coming up. Mm -hmm. So what is a good antidote for that? Well, be like mother. Be like mother and uh, of course, you know, what do we expect? We have uh, different ideas, different political views, different, etc. But at the same time, <clears throat> we are, as a practitioner, we have to see this planet as a you know like a family house, and uh, everybody is uh, our family. Like when I said uh, be like mother, it means that uh, my mother had ten children and. Uh, I wasn't a good one. <laughs> I fight a lot and argue all of this stuff, but she had more compassion than, you know, she had more compassion to those child, uh, little weird. <laughs> so 
as a practitioner, we you know we talk about bodhisattva, right? Bodhisattva means uh, it doesn't mean that you know you have to agree everything. You know, you don't have to agree everything. But at the same time, in your mind, that you know, people make a lot of trouble. You know, very unfortunate, making a lot of negative, uh, creating a lot of negative karma. So if you, you know, you have been mother and you have children, and if you think of yourself, uh, you know, how you treat or one of your child is, you know, acting strangely, <laughs> and you, you, you know, you, you may. Sometimes get upset, you may not, you know, agree, but at the same time, you still have that, uh, you know, you will never let go of that child, right? So that's what we need, this uh, very turmoil condition and to uh, seriously pray for those people. Lama La. Mm -hmm. So good to see you. Good to so see you too, Wind. I noticed um, if I when I when I meditate, if I have one good like meditation where I'm just like in the zone and I'm relaxed and I feel like I'm there and it and my time just goes by, I'm not like thinking about opening up my eye and looking at how much is left of my time or anything like that. Mm -hmm. What happens to me, and I think it might be because, I, you know, I'm in recovery, as a lot of people know. I wonder if it's my addict mind that goes, oh my God, tomorrow when I meditate, I'm going to have that same meditation. I'm going to sit the same way. I'm going to just mm -hmm. pull it all together. And I'm mm -hmm. going to have that same kind of feeling. And I'm like, so... I think maybe, I guess maybe attachment to that feeling. I don't know. And then the next day, of course, because I, I'm attached to that feeling, I can't, mm -hmm. I don't have that great of a meditation. So mm -hmm. I find myself doing that a lot lately, like mm -hmm. looking for that great feeling again. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that? Or oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's, uh, you know, who doesn't like a uh, peaceful mind and, uh, you know, um, such a feeling uh, and uh, actually <clears throat> as long as we don't understand the definition of uh, thoughts mm -hmm. I think we will have a long way to go with meditation when I talk about the definition of thought because uh, Sometimes, you know, due to your physical condition, weather condition, environment condition, maybe your walking condition, you feel like even you don't do meditation, you feel okay. And when you do meditation, you feel much better at times, you know, as mm -hmm. you have expressed, it's totally different. But uh, thought-wise, the concept-wise or confusion-wise, depression-wise, there's not much difference because uh, if you cannot uh, cut the root of your confusion, then uh, meditation doesn't really, you know, uh, succeed. What I mean is like uh, any concept or any stress or any depression this thought has three definitions. One is that uh, thought itself is transparent. The thought is not something like concrete that we normally think. Thought is transparent. What does transparent means that uh, you can't keep that feeling here. You know, it's just constantly changing, transparent. That is the one definition. So what is the quality of understanding what is transparent is because then you feel a sense of liberation you know, once you mm. understand that what is transparent. Secondly, that transparent is never departed from emptiness. Mm. So transparent, not only transparent, but also emptiness. And then third is uh, whatever thought arise, whatever feeling, whatever emotion arise, it always carries, uh, you know, captures the bliss, 
within that feeling, even though anger, why it becomes anger? Because we just want to get rid of that. It becomes tough and, you know, but if you understand, oh, it's transparent, it's emptiness, naturally become blissful. Mm. So then you, what is the benefit of understanding that is that once you understand the, the three kind of characters, <clears throat> then you will never, I would never say you will never, but <laughs> at least you are not afraid of meditating because any thought arise, any emotion arise, they are not something to get rid of, but they are, uh, uh, what's the word? You adorned, they mm -hmm. are adorned with this uh, transparent emptiness and blissful. So, so that means you become a good friend with your thoughts. Otherwise, uh, you become very picky and then, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. we, we, we won't win because uh, these, they are limitless thoughts and uh, you can't always, uh, you know, monitor them. Mm. Yeah, that's good for me to think about. Thank you, Lama Lama. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. Any other questions? Maybe we should have a last question now, if anyone has a question. I have a question. How are you guys doing? Good? Yes. Mm. Really, I, I, I expressed, you know, because earlier that, you know, it's not about the teaching itself, but it's so happy to see you all still there. I'm there. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> also giving teaching is for me, is like uh, also uh, uh, makes me very happy because it's just, uh, I can express my suffering to you. <laughs> Confusion saying that we are on the same page, let's travel together. All right, I guess that's it, right? I think so, yes. Thank you so much, Lamala, for everything and for being here tonight, because we know it's late for you. Mm -hmm. No, actually, I stay up late. This is the quiet time for me. <laughs> well, thank you for letting us be out with you in your quiet time. But um, yeah, so I think that's it. And I'm um, really grateful to have you here. You know, I miss yeah. seeing you. So um, everything's good. Thanks everybody Thank for joining. Thank you very much for all of you. Continue supporting the center and continue our Zoom teachings. And this is really wonderful. I really enjoyed it very much. And uh, also pray for me too, okay? <laughs> don't forget me when you do prayer you know and uh, <clears throat> but uh, um, Mama, could, you say, Mama, could you say a, a ded quick dedication prayer yes yes I, I do believe that uh, any positive thought we can generate you know feels uh, so different but not only that accumulate a lot of merit Speaking of that, you know, tonight teaching, I would like to dedicate this to all sentient beings, especially all these fires and uh, hurricanes happening everywhere and pandemic and all the suffering. You know, this is the <clears throat> almost like worst condition during our era. And, uh, but as a practitioner, we have to be like, uh, um, like a mountain, no out of patience. Patience, I remember when I was appointed as KGD president and uh, uh, I was panic. I'm still panicking, <laughs> even though I'm almost over. So I went to Rinpoche and I told him that he said, as long as you have patience, everything will be fine. Uh, 
not everything going, you know, it's, uh, but patience is extremely important. And uh, so think about patience, uh, especially with your loved ones who are stuck with you. <laughs> And uh, so uh, let's dedicate this message for all thinking beings. May we able to perfect our patience. The ultimate patience is simply rest in nature of mind. And uh, that is uh, what uh, explained earlier. Able to experience the, all these delusions, thoughts are transparent, emptiness and blissful. And they are uh, you know, a support for our practice. Sonunda <laughs> <laughs>